Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the Photoshop Elements noise reduction tools to get rid of all this dust and scratches and stuff in here. We'll be going from this as our start to this as our finish. There's the start and there's the finish. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button and, of course, share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well so you don't miss out on any videos in the future. And if you really want to learn how to use Photoshop Elements, the best way is with my complete training, and you'll find a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Here's the original picture with all the nice dust and scratches in here. Let's just zoom in a little bit. You can see lots of dust up in here. A couple of birds right there, but lots of dust aside from that big splotch right there. More dust and scratches on the water. There is some down here in the wall, but it's really hard to see because the wall texture kind of hides all of that. So the important areas to look at are the water and, of course, the sky up here. Now the tool we'll be using to remove this is a filter under noise right there, and it's dust and scratches. And if I click on and off the preview here, you can see how it does a good job of getting rid of the dust and scratches and stuff in these more even toned areas, but it also blurs out our foreground figure. That's the problem with this technique. See right there, there's a foreground figure is blurred out. So, in order to do this, we need to separate out the different areas of the picture into separate layers and then work on them individually. Let's go back and take a look at our full picture here. There we go. Now there's a little bit of dust or scratches up in here, a couple of things in here. Those can easily be taken care of just using the spot healing brush. So we really don't want to be doing anything on this foreground stuff in here. Leave that alone. We then have the water in behind here, which has kind of one texture to it. It has more texture than the sky and the mountains, but it has a texture to it. And then the sky and mountains are kind of very similar on being relatively soft focus. So there are three areas to worry about. Our foreground, which we don't want to touch, our water, and then the background past the water. So to do that, we need to separate those out into distinct areas. So we'll start off with our foreground here. Let's just take the background. And to do this, you can actually just work right on the background. We'll use the refined edge along the edge of our figure here. And with the refined edge tool, as our last step there, we can actually have that give us a new layer with a layer mask. So, let's just zoom in, just like this. I'll start off on the left-hand side, way over here. And because we have some straight lines, I'll use the polygonal lasso tool. I'll set the feathering at one pixel, which is just my favorite setting. It's just enough to soften the edge up just a little bit, but not too much. And then starting just outside, we'll come into a nice straight line right along the edge of that wall there. And then I'll use this tool to carefully come around this little bit of styrofoam that he's using as a table. And up and around this bag. Now I'm trying to be careful on this part of it. Mostly because these values are similar to the values in the water. It would be difficult for the refined edge tool to actually handle this part. So I'll do this one old-fashioned way, just being careful with this tool. Now notice how I'm moving rather slowly with this. That's because if you click too fast with this tool, the whole selection collapses and you have to start over again. Now at this point, I can either stay in fairly tight with this tool or I can use Refined Edge. I'll just use a Refined Edge. I'll come in close to the jacket, but not quite. And I'll stay out just a little ways. And we'll do that last little bit with the Refine Edge tool. Now here, I'm going to hold down the space bar, which gives me the hand tool allowing me to move this picture a little bit. And then we'll continue on around, just staying just outside of our subject here. Now we get down to the hair. You almost can't see the separation between the hair and the background. So the Refine Edge tool have a very hard time with that. So I'm going to come in right up against the edge here and I'll just do the hair directly. 
just like that and then up around the ear I'll go ahead and just get that in then I can come out again the refinish tool is great as long as you have good separation between your foreground and your background I got the space bar for that hand tool and you can finish off the last little bit down here and then right into that corner right there straight out come outside of the image at this point you can then come down now if I just come just to the bottom like that the picture will auto scroll and I'll click out here someplace in the left hand side as I get outside of the picture area it auto scrolls again and I'll go back there it is and then back to the start you can see why I started outside it just makes it easy to find the starting position again okay now that selects the foreground I want to now clean up this edge and we'll use the refine edge tool right there under select refine edge there it is now in this one we can zoom in just use the zoom tool right there and I'll zoom in a couple of clicks like that and come out of this tool here this is the refine radius tool I'll leave all these settings at their default settings which is normally just fine now I'll bring up the size of my brush a little bit here and set this at about 25 that's pretty good now to use this tool put that crosshair that plus sign in the area you want to mask but overlap the tool into the area you don't want to have masked. what this does is it asks Photoshop elements to go in and re-examine that edge and find the actual edge and then just kind of paint along like that let go and it goes back and it finds the edge that's not perfect we'll have to come in and clean things up a little bit I'm using the wheel of my mouse right there to roll that around there we go. Now, if you hold the space bar down again, there's that hand. We can move that. And let's just work clear along the edge here. Now, we did the hair already. I'll leave that alone. And again, there's that space bar. And let's come in right along the ear. We'll finish this side. We'll then go back and do the other side. And again, the space bar. And let's just finish the refining of this edge. Now notice that some spots like that, it, it kind of comes in red a little bit inside of our figure. We'll fix that on the second pass. Okay, just right down to the bottom like that. There we go. And then we'll move the picture over to this side. Now it's a little bit off right there, as you can see. I need to fix that. Well, let's give it a shot. Let's see, maybe it'll find the edge. It actually does. Okay. In that case, we're fine. It found that edge for me. And again, just go quickly up along this edge here. So it's a two-step process with the refine edge. First step, put your edge in. Second step, go to this tool. This is the erase refinements tool. It undoes what you did. Let's bring our size down to about 10. Looks like 11 is pretty good there. So it's smaller than I used before. And now come inside the figure and then paint right along that edge and it will take out any refined edge adjustment that's in there. It just kind of cleans up that edge. Now you don't need to be absolutely perfect on this because of our technique where we work on the same photograph on top of itself. So if you're not perfect, it's not really going to show. And again, the space bar allows us to move this around and look for areas like that where the red mask is coming in a little ways into the image. Notice I'm using the red mask right up here. Okay, moving along. Now it's a little bit of the, right in here. Let's try if I can get that. I'm not really seeing anything in there. That's, there we go. That got that little bit. And then catch around that. So it's just a matter then of going along and double checking your edges and getting them as clean as you can. So do the outside first with the top tool and then come back and clean up the inside edge with the bottom tool. Okay, a little bit right there on the ear and then this edge of the jacket. Now once this is done, we can then use this mask as our first stage. There we go. 
and I'll just come along here. Again, just refining that edge. If it's a, just a little bit of an overlap there, that's perfectly fine. And we'll be using this to create a layer mask, and that layer mask will allow us to separate out the foreground from the background. Okay, that looks fine. Now, there's a refined edge. Come down here where it says Output, Output 2, and set this at New Layer with Layer Mask, and then choose OK. And see there the background has not disappeared. Now it's a little bit still in right down in here, right there. We can clean that kind of thing up here on the layer mask itself. Notice how layer mask is black and white. White is showing our figure. Black is hiding the background. So if I paint black on the layer mask, it's going to hide that. So let's go ahead and do that. There's our paintbrush. That's a pretty good size. You can see it right there. Soft edge, 25 pixels. I'm on the layer mask. Look for that light blue outline. Double click if you don't see it. Black is my foreground color and then just paint onto the layer mask just like that and we can clean that out. You don't need to be really careful in here because what we're doing taking out that noise is mostly up in the picture further up. Okay that's nicely cleaned up. Let's now zoom out, go back to fit on screen and there's our first stage that's the foreground area is now separated. Now take this layer as you recall, on the refined edge, we did new layer with layer mask. That's our new layer. There's the layer mask. Take this layer, drag it up here to a new layer. Now on the layer here, this is our foreground. If you want to just double click here and change the name here to foreground, that's fine. This will be our water layer. Let's double click here. I'm going to rename this water. There we are. Now hide the top layer. On this layer, click over on the layer mask side, look for that light blue outline, go up to filter and come down to adjustments and invert. We now just see the water and the sky. So we've actually removed that figure and the water and sky are showing. I want just the water part of this. So all we have to do is to mask out this part up here. And that's easy to do, just grab the polygonal lasso tool, come in here right along this edge and make a line just like that. There you go. And come up around the top and then down to the beginning. So I now have this area selected. This area is not selected. I can then take my paintbrush again, bring my size up quite a bit. About 200, that's pretty good. Make sure you're on the layer mask right there. And so we paint into the sky. I'm painting black onto the layer mask and that's hiding the sky. Okay, so this becomes our water layer. Now if I show our top layer here, there's the foreground, there's the water. If I show my background layer, there's the sky. Let's now deselect. Now I'll be doing our adjustments here on the water and on this layer here, but I don't want to work on the background. I want to leave this one protected. So let's take this layer, drag it up to the new layer button like that. That makes a copy of that. Let's rename this one Sky. It's actually Sky plus that mountain, but I'll just call it Sky. And then hide the background layer. That's my safety. In case I mess things up, I'm okay down here. Now we don't need a layer mask on this layer because that's taken care of with these two layers up here. All right, let's do the sky first. The reason I'm doing the sky separate from the water is because the level of detail is different between these two and the settings will be just a little bit different between those two. Also at this point, we've done all the hard work. That's all done. From here on out, it's actually very easy. Okay, so we're on our sky layer. That's the sky background layer. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. Let's do a couple of clicks here and scroll up. Okay, we can see that nicely now. I like to go back to the move tool just out of habit. Okay, up to filter, come down to noise and dust and scratches. Now the way you use this tool, move both of these settings to the left. The top one is your radius, the bottom one is threshold. This is kind of a refinement of this one. This button up here allows you to preview the effect right on your picture. Notice that even with these set at 
very low settings, it's already getting rid of a lot of that dust and scratches. It's already taken care of that. So to do this, come down here to the top slider and begin moving it in just a little bit at a time. Make sure that preview is selected. Move it in just one notch at a time until you have cleaned out all of your spots in there. And that looks like five is pretty good. I'm going to set this at four and take a look. Okay, just a little bit right there, which I'm going to leave that in. You want it as low as you can, but getting rid of your stuff. So there it is with and without. So it really kind of cleans that up nicely. But it softens everything up. It also is losing all of that little sense of film grain. I want to keep that film grain effect. We can bring that back in again with the threshold. So our next thing here is to move the threshold up and begin pushing this to the right until you begin to see that dust and scratches stuff show up again. If you look really carefully now, I'm beginning to just see some, some detail showing up and up in here I'm beginning to see some of that dust and scratches stuff happening in there. So a little less than that, let's say about 15. Be a little less. We'll try 10, looks pretty good. So you want to first do this Remove the dust and scratches, then move your threshold up as much as you can to bring back in some of the effect of film grain, things like that. I'll just go ahead and preview that. And there we go, nice and clean. We still have this spot up here. We'll take care of that as a last step. These big things like this, you can fix that with the spot healing brush. Okay, so there's our first dust and scratches for the sky. And I'm leaving just a little bit of that in there because I want to leave as much detail as I can, but get rid of the majority of the dust and scratches. And choose OK. All right, that takes care of our sky. Let's now scroll down and look at the water in here. And there's a lot of dust and scratches in here, as you can see. Same exact trick. Let's go up here to the water layer, back to our filter, noise, dust and scratches. And these are the settings that we just used before. Let me bring down the radius again, bring the threshold down. And let's take a look at the right hand side. It's actually pretty close already in here. Now notice if I go too far with this, I begin to lose some of the water effect. The water begins to go too soft. So I can't use the same settings I had before. So I'll come in just a little bit, maybe three instead of four. Let's try two. Okay, the two, I still see that spot right there. At three, that spot goes away. Let's now bring our threshold up and bring back in some of that water detail. So we're getting the water effect back in here and we're not seeing our dust and scratches yet. So you can see it's a different setting. Okay, I'm beginning to see that bit of dust right there at scratch. So let's just back it off from there just a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Let's just preview. Losing just a little bit up in here on the water. Let me back it up just a little bit more. And I think that's pretty good. I'm losing just a touch there, but not too much. So it's kind of a trade off. You want to get rid of your dust and scratches and leave as much detail as possible. And there's going to be a little bit of detail loss, but you try to minimize that as much as you can. So there we go. That's a pretty good setting for the water. Again, notice it's a different setting from what we used on the sky because the level of detail is different. Choose OK. And there we go. That takes care of our dust and our scratches on this image. Let's see how we've, we've done so far. I'll take the background layer down here. Let's copy this to a new layer. I'll put that on top. Let's hide that background again. So there's the original and there's our dust and scratches. Now if you notice, we still have this problem right there to fix and the birds aren't as sharp as they should be. These are in the sky, that's right down here. So we can mask those out from that effect and actually take a look at the background in here instead. So let's bring our background back up again. On the sky layer, click on the add layer mask. It gives us a layer mask in here. We can now paint black on this and show the original through without touching the original, but we can then see the original bird. So I'll do that with black. Let's go to our paintbrush, 
brush size is way too large. Let's bring that down. That's pretty good. 30, soft edge. I'm just going to come right on top of that one like that. And right on top of there like that. So all I'm doing now is I am masking out the sky adjustment. So we're seeing the original background through, which is just those two birds. And that cleans those birds up. Now on this piece up here, this one I want to fix right on the sky layer. So double click over here so you're on the image side of the sky layer. Let's go to our spot healing brush. And just come right on top of that and hit that a few times until that goes away. That's pretty good. Maybe just a little larger on the brush. There it is. And that's gone. Anything else you want to come in at this point, you can go ahead and just use this spot healing brush. We need little spots that you may not like. And that cleans it up. So the sky is all taken care of. The water looks good. Now there may be a few bits of dust and scratches left in the foreground because we haven't done anything down there. So let's go to that. That's our foreground layer here. Make sure you're on the image side. And again, using that spot healing brush, just click on any little dust and scratch you want to take care of in there. These are probably okay because they're on the wall. They're not really noticeable. Do just a few little spots on here. And it's all nice and clean. Everything looks good. Okay, let's zoom back out again to fit screen. There it is. Let's take a look at our original. There is the original, and here's the cleanup version. We've cleaned up all the dust and scratches on our image. At this point, if you want to adjust your values in here, you can do that easily enough. Make sure you're on your top foreground layer. Go up to layer, new adjustment layer. Any adjustments in here, put these as a layer above this layer. Let's just do levels. And don't check this checkbox. We want this to be applied to all of these layers equally. So it's just up there. Now let's go ahead and bring our darks up a little bit. That's pretty good. A little mid-tone adjustment, a little more dark. Bring our lights up a little bit. So just adjusting our values, making the picture a little bit more punchy. And that takes care of that. So anything you can come into at this point and use as an adjustment layer, any of these, you're fine to do. If you want to do anything fancier on this, like if you want to do a grunge effect or some other fancy filter over in here from the filter gallery, anything like this, you're going to have to combine all of this stuff onto a new layer. And the way you do that is you make sure your sample layer up here is hidden and you're on your top shown or exposed layer right there and then hold down the special keyboard shortcut that's the control shift alt and E key and that combines all of these layers onto a new layer. So if I now hide all this stuff, you can see all of that's combined onto this one layer. Now I can do anything I want on this layer, do my filters, my grunge effect, whatever. I'm now working on a nice cleaned up image. But there you go. That is how you use that dust and scratches tool to clean up a picture. The two main tricks on this, one is to separate out your parts of your image, sky, in this case the water and the foreground on separate layers so that you can adjust those individually or separately. The other one, and this is the important part, is when you work with this filter, come back to our noise, dust and scratches, set them both all the way to the left, do your radius first to remove your dust and then bring your threshold up as far as you can to bring back as much natural detail as possible. So there you go. That's using the dust and scratches to do noise reduction here inside of Photoshop Elements. Now if you really want to learn how to use the Photoshop Elements program and you also want to help support this channel so I can keep on doing nice videos like this, then take a look at my complete training title and you'll find a link for that right down there in the description. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, Click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.